Grace and peace to you from Onalaska First United Methodist Church. You're listening to our podcast. We hope you enjoy. Mark 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem, if Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you. And immediately, as you enter it, you will see tied there a colt who has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The word of the Lord. Thanks 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 be be to God. Well, here we are, Palm Sunday, the last week of Lent. And we are stuck in a pandemic. Like many of you, we are trying to find ways to pass the time at home. We are stuck at home. Not much we can do. We can go for occasional walks. We can go out in the front yard, in the backyard. When we need groceries, we are very carefully getting those uh, as little as possible. And we're just trying to find ways uh, to all be under the same roof. Uh, and still love each other. Uh, We are doing things like playing croquet in our backyard. We've been reading lots of books. We've been playing lots of Monopoly. And yes, I hate to admit it, we have been watching movies. Movies. You know, we realized the other night that uh, Legend had never seen the original Aladdin, the animated version. Now, we took him to the theater to see the redo Uh, with Will Smith, the live action one, but he had never seen the original Aladdin. And so we got that pulled up on the TV and made some popcorn and we turned it on. And like I knew he would, Legend was giggling out loud as Robin Williams uh, so brilliantly played the genie in Aladdin. You know, I was reading through our text this week for Palm Sunday And I was brought back to a particular scene in that movie. Now, you may recall it uh, when Aladdin rides into Agrabah as Prince Ali. Do you remember that scene on the screen? Hopefully you can see that. This is a picture of Aladdin as Prince Ali riding into the city on an elephant. He's got a lot of people surrounding him. He is standing up on the head of the elephant It was quite the procession as he came into the city. Now, you may recall, if you've seen the movie, that Aladdin, really what he wanted was the affection of Princess Jasmine. But he was a commoner, what what people called a street rat. And he believed in his heart that as a street rat, he could never win the affection of Princess Jasmine. And so when he found the magic lamp, And realized that he had three wishes, he knew what he wanted to do. His first wish was that he might become Prince Ali. And so in this famous scene, Prince Ali rides into town with all the pomp and circumstance that a prince should have. He's riding on this element. He's followed by slaves and concubines and dancers. He's got golden camels. He has singers surrounding him. It's all the pizzazz and all the flash 
that you would imagine a prince would have as he rides into town. In fact, the song that the genie sings is just filled with all kinds of ways in which Prince Ali is a true prince. He has riches. He has power. He has handsome charm. Prince Ali is a true prince by all accounts, by everything that we can see of him. And I was thinking about Jesus as he entered into Jerusalem. And even though in your Bibles, if you turn to this particular text, it would probably have a subtitle that would say something like the triumphal entry. We call it the triumphal entry. Even though we call it that, Jesus, as he entered into Jerusalem, was so very different from Aladdin and Prince Ali. Because Jesus rides into town on a humble donkey. And Jesus is surrounded by a ragtag bunch of followers that he has picked up along the way. People like fishermen and tax collectors and lepers and Pharisees and prostitutes and zealots. And blind beggars. Certainly this is not the same crowd that accompanied Prince Ali. And Jesus, quite different than Prince Ali, is entering Jerusalem. Because by the end of the week he will be hanging on a cross. You see, Jesus' story is not Prince Ali's story. When I am writing sermons or thinking about or praying about how God would direct me to write a sermon, sometimes I have to really work hard at it. I really have to listen and I really have to dig into the scriptures. God never fails. God always gives me something to say. Whether it's received or not, I can't say, but but I've never shown up on Sunday without a sermon to preach. But sometimes, sometimes what I'm supposed to say hits me like a ton of bricks. And this was the case this week. Because Monday night, Tuesday morning, I woke up in the middle of the night with a start And as soon as I woke up, I had this troubling thought on my mind. And my thought was, you know, with all that's going on in this pandemic and these live stream services, this Palm Sunday is just going to be a joke. It's just going to be a joke. I mean, here we are, a handful of us processing in to some pre-recorded music, Michael W. Smith, as lovely as the song is, it's still pre-recorded and we're waving our sad bunch of palm leaves, just a handful of us here and dropping them into the bucket. This was supposed to be the Sunday that we had our Easter cantata. The choir was going to sing for us. And we want the children coming up the aisle with their palm leaves. But instead, we have this. We have you at home watching us, perhaps waving your own leafy branch. There's no choir behind me. This sanctuary is not filled with shouts of joy. This Palm Sunday feels like a joke to me. I mean, the least that we can do for Jesus, who's riding into Jerusalem for the purpose of dying, the least we could do is honor him and praise him for his love and sacrifice and to do Palm Sunday the right way. We want all the glitz and the glory. We want the procession, the singing and the dancing 
I want this place filled with palm branches. I want the laughter and the praise. And instead we have this. You know, this virus has reduced us to a sad, small display that isn't even worth what Jesus did for us. So this was my thought Monday night as I woke up with a start. God, what are we going to do? What a sad display we are going to have. And immediately, immediately God reminded me of the prophet Zechariah. Because Zechariah, hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus came, laid out a vision for God's ideal king. I want to read that to you. Just a small section in the prophet Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 9. He said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I was reminded of this passage, and I knew that Jesus knew his scriptures. Jesus knew the prophet Zechariah, and knew that Zechariah had laid out a vision for what God's ideal king would look like. And Jesus took that to heart. And so Jesus rides into town. Humble. Riding on a donkey. Not pompous like Prince Ali. Not pompous like Pilate. Who we think probably was riding in on the other side of town at this exact moment with a display that was more like Aladdin's because that's how kings rode into town with processions, with chariots, with horses, with trumpets, with gold, with slaves. But Jesus did not ride into town in that way. Because Zechariah had already said, this is what God's king must look like. In fact, many scholars think that Jesus was actually making a joke here. A satirical display against Pilate and Rome's power. And perhaps, perhaps Pilate even got word about Jesus' political stunt. And when it came time to crucify him, this gave him all the more reason to do it. You see, to Pilate, Jesus seemed like a fool, riding in on a donkey with his pitiful entourage, this ragtag bunch of followers. Jesus seems like the exact opposite of a triumphant and victorious king. But according to Zechariah, this is exactly how it needed to be. The triumphant and victorious king would come in humbled, riding on a donkey. That's not all Zechariah had to say about those who would be God's ideal king. He said that a humble king would also lead not by might, not by power, but by the spirit. God's ideal king would be a spirit driven king who is not seduced by power and prestige. That can be found in Zechariah chapter four, verse six and just a couple verses later in verse 10, Zechariah turns to the people. And he says, under the direction of a king like this, 
a king who is humbled and is spirit led and does not lead by power and might under a king like this, the people would see joy. Verse 10, he says, whoever has despised the day of small things shall rejoice. I looked that word up there, small things. Small things here in Hebrew literally means unworthy things. Things of no account. Pitiful things. Kind of like today. Kind of like what we have happening right here. You see, I woke up Monday night. I was despising this small and pitiful and unworthy day. But Zechariah says, whoever has despised the day of small things shall rejoice. And it hit me. I knew that if it was good enough for Jesus, then to proclaim his kingship with a ragtag satirical joke of a display. It's probably good enough for him today. In fact, I would wager to guess that Jesus loves what is happening right here, right now. I think Jesus loves this because this is more in line with how he chose to do it back then. See, I believe Jesus is proud of us for doing what we can in this moment, in this historical moment in time, doing what we can to still celebrate, to make a public declaration. This video is being broadcasted publicly. Anyone in the world can watch this if they want to. We're making a public statement by assembling in this way. Hopefully some of you at home have placed some palm branches on your doorsteps and your doors and your windows as a way to say, this is Palm Sunday and Jesus is our King. And we will not be discouraged in the shadow of Rome or rival kings or even coronaviruses. <laughs> and I believe as followers of that type of king, one who leads in humility, not by might, not by power, but by the spirit that we are moved to live lives the same way and the spirit directs us and I can see the spirit moving even in the midst of what is happening. You know, some of you during this time, you have bonded closer to your friends and family than you thought you could. This has brought you together in ways. Maybe it's healed some stuff. Maybe you've had some really good conversations with those closest to you that you've needed to have for a long time. Some of you, have experienced a deeper prayer life in the midst of all this. You have turned to prayer in ways that you never thought that you could. But prayer seems to be one of the only things that we can do right now. And so you have found your spiritual life grow in the midst of prayer. Some of you have taken a moment just to breathe and just to be in the presence of of God. We get so busy. There are so many things to do. But in a moment like this, all you can do is rest in the presence of God and breathe. You see, we don't understand God's way of doing things. We don't understand it because it's so different than the way we do things. But Zechariah tells us and Christ shows us that there is power in weakness and there is triumph in tragedy when we choose to be led by the Spirit. 
So I ask you this morning, have you experienced small days, pitiful displays, unworthy things, despised? Have you experienced those? Because we have a promise. We have a promise from God that those who follow God's chosen, humble, spirit-led fool of a king and choose to embrace the same life that our despised and small days will soon turn to rejoicing. So in anticipation of that day, we do what we can. We wave our feeble palm branches. We put them on our doorsteps. We pray. We sing at home. And then we shout from the top of our lungs, Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.